Right, I've got to do me regular visit to the post office. I dropped some parcels off. I got a couple of quotes to go and do. And we had a clear out in our extension the other day, which ended up with a trip to the tip, which might be a video that comes up, the trip to the tip. And while we were having a clear out, <laughs> I found this. Uh, apparently, this is our family crest or a coat of arms or whatever it is. Uh, this is a copy I had made of our original one, which was a hand painted um, small picture. So, this is the same size uh, <clears throat> I have had a couple of looks into this to try and find out what it is but do you know what with the power of the interweb some of you guys out there will know an awful lot more about this sort of thing than I will <clears throat> apparently the bird at the top is actually a pelican and he's plucking his own breast to feed three chicks that has a meaning, which I can't remember what it was. The three rampant lions, well, those of you know know what three rampant lions are for. And apparently the cockle shells have got something to do with the Crusades. Other than that, I don't know. There is apparently a motto that goes with this. Unfortunately, the motto is not on my copy, and it's not on the copy that Dad's got. So I would be really, really interested to know if, A, that is our coat of arms, because apparently it is, and apparently it's been hung in the family home for generations. And B, if anybody knows about these things, what can you tell me about it? What do the lions, the cockle shells, and the pelican plucking its breast actually mean? So... Whether it's to the Pullin family, whether it's to the... Now, do I tell you? Because my full surname isn't just Pullin. I have a quadruple barreled surname. But do I tell you what that is? Especially as my wife loves to take the mickey at me for it. I might tell you that another day. So, yes, my surname is Pullin, um, but that's kind of, there's three Christian names that go in front of our surname, which the oldest son of each generation is usually christened with. For some reason, my father and myself were missed out on that, although we were both the eldest sons. So, yeah, sometimes those few extra names are better kept secret. Anyway, so, anybody know about family crests, coats of arms, stuff like that? Can you tell me anything about that? Because all I know is what my dad told me, what his granddad told him, and his granddad told him, that is the family crest. So, is there somebody else with the same crest that we can go back and cross-match our ancestors? There you go. There's something to get you going, isn't it? So just, you know, this isn't a, I've got a family crest and you have me or nothing like that. This is just a case of, this is supposed to be ours. I'm intrigued to know. And when I, when I contacted the Royal College of Arms in London, um, I ought to find the letter, really. I got an extremely polite and flowery, really, I call it a flowery reply. Uh offering to research and tell me all about this for the minute fee of 600 and something pounds. I want to know, but I don't want to know that much. Right, we are going to the post office and I'm going to go to the picture framers and see if I can get that framed 
because whether it's ours or not, it's been in the family for years and I kind of like it. Comfy, are we? Don't you start getting gobby with me. I get in the van and it's there starts on me. Yep, 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 yep. Where's my biscuit? I'm hungry. You're not hungry. Look, it's only half past 11. No way are you hungry. Don't you start that. Not working. Nope. Nope. Well, that was an interesting visit to the post office. I get in there and I pull my parcel through. She goes, I got one to come back to. She goes, brings me this parcel. She goes, no way is that a letter. And I said, you're right. There is no way that's a letter. She goes, you'll have to take it back and resend it. And I goes, I don't think I will. She said, why not? I said, because it's not mine. It's somebody else's. Oh, oops. <laughs> there you go. I did say I was broad enough to know if, if she really, really needed somebody to blame, if she could point her finger at me, I, I don't mind, you know, because I do get the blame for quite a lot of stuff. So, not having one. No. No good creeping. Anyway, I'm going to go see if I can get my hair cut. I might be lucky. Not be, but it might be. My ears, they they need lowering a bit. You soak it now, are you? Are oh, your sirens? That's oh, right. He's going that way. We're okay. It wasn't me. But it's only just gone past midday. We only stopped for half an hour. You can't be hungry. You giving me lip? I'm gonna have to get this seatbelt sorted out. Yep. No, it's not us, mate. Go in. Look, a couple. People that think I'll spoil you. Right, don't eat them all at once. This is usual. She complains, I give her some biscuits. She then looks at them to go, is that it? And then she'll eat them. You wanna bury it now, do you? I'll put, you, I'll put it back in the jar if you don't want it. Terrier attitude, this is. Right. Right, well, welcome back. We're on our way to... I am going to have to get that fixed. Because it's becoming a pain in the arse, and I don't like slamming the door. And the dog's in here. So. Lock your ears. I think maybe today or tomorrow I'm gonna have to have an hour put aside to see if I can get the door panel off and fix this. Because it is becoming a nuisance. One or two have said it's an MOT failure. Um, I don't actually think this would fail the MOT because the seatbelt still actually works as long as I can put it on. Um, so I can still put on, it's just, just a pain. So but it's a case of whether I want to take the interior apart and do it myself, or just get our mechanic to do it. So, um, in life, lots of folks do things themselves because they're saving 
they think they're saving money and that's fair enough you know um, but the way I see stuff is I have my business and that's how I earn my living with the tree work and a bit of the farm I suppose that's how I earn my living my mechanic earns his living by fixing cars so and I'm a firm believer in keeping the local economy going whatever else so I can fix that probably or I end up taking that apart having to order parts and bits and put it back together and hoping I get it right which I should or I spend what's it take an hour 35 pounds and my mechanic fits it or repairs it and if he's got all the bits well he knows where to get them from and I got to our Ford garage and I can order them in our Ford garage but he can probably get stuff faster and maybe even cheaper than I can so what I'm trying to say is, is while I'm fixing this door I'm not earning anything for my business um, while he's fixing the door I could still be earning probably about the same per hour on the tree side as I would with that and money's going round and round so I don't believe in hoarding in it uh, I believe in using it money is a tool so and if I can use tools in my box that help other folks and in return like our garage our guy he employs us to look after his trees it's give and take swings and roundabouts local economy right then we're going to go off and dust a wasp nest uh, which I think another tree surgeon is having issues with is in a willow stub I believe um, so they've had to halt their work because they can't do it so we're going to go off and save them and then I'm going to go and look at some eucalyptus trees I think there you go Morning world, it is Thursday 9th of July it is a damp and miserable windy morning so we're off to service to look at some trees and buy some chainsaw stuff it really is not that nice out there this morning so there is pretty much nothing that has to be done on the farm um, today so I'm kind of having a day off from the farm and I'm gonna concentrate on tree stuff today catch up because I've got a lot to catch up with uh, we have just taken on a new member of staff as a trainee or in the process of taking on a new member of staff as a trainee so I need to go and get him some basic PPE uh, to get go with and while we're going to Sirencester to um, uh, Lister Wilder at Love Lane, I'm also going to call in to uh, the Royal uh, Agricultural University to have a look at a dead Scots pine for them. Um, all they sent me is a photograph so far, and all I know is it's next to a hedge and there's a telephone cable. That, that's as much as I need, or as much as I know, sorry. So we're off up there to have a look at that, and I thought, you know what? Can't do much else. I'll stick you on time lapse, uh, stick a bit of soundtrack or something on it, and you guys can come with me to Sirencester. There's that. Keys, keys, they work better than ignition. Okay, shall we?
Right. We have arrived. So I'm going to pop in and see the guys at the desk at Lister Water, pick up my bits, maybe ask a question, and then we're going to look at a dead tree. Okay. Right, that's my bit of shopping done. Could be because I'm parked on a slope. Uh, nice to see the guys in the shop. I haven't seen them for months because of lockdown. So uh, I did mention though that the showroom was a bit like walking through IKEA because they put a one-way system with little arrows on the floor of, you know, obviously for social distancing and that. And he almost looked offended when I said it was like Ikea in there, but then he understood what I meant. And it was funny. You had to be there. Yeah, there's room for both of us. So now or not, where we're going to now is where I did my first ever practical chainsaw training. With Tim Bendel was my tutor, and he's still teaching you today. Um, so this is where I did the equivalent of my CS30 and 31. I think in those days it was called uh, Unit 13. So that, so uh, you know, originally all the chainsaw training for from basic right up to tree surgery was about four courses. But obviously Lantra and NPTC thought, well, we're missing a trick here. We can turn those four courses into 20 courses. And instead of charging one fee, we could charge 20, which was brilliant for them, not so much for us. But there you are, that was a long time ago, that was 25 years ago. Well that was very pleasant, a very nice lady. Right. Uh, so we're not removing the dead Scots pine, we're going to pollard it. So she would like um, a dead pole to grow up. Now what was it, a climbing rose? A clematis? It was a climbing plant she wanted to put at the stem, so pollard. So you need two. First. Then. Right, ninth for the seventh, twenty, and stack, waste, in woodland, for habitat. So, yeah, just a bit of unused, unloved land just behind. Um, that is crying out for a habitat stack. We regularly um, don't chip all our waste, and if there is room, things like leaving um, um, a dead stick stem, brilliant for um, insects. Um, in this case it is for a climbing plant, but it will actually support loads of wildlife for possibly the next 10-15 years, maybe, maybe even more. And then the pile of brush in the woodland behind is cover for small animals, so there will be uh, feeding opportunities, uh, hiding opportunities, um, so yeah, sometimes being really really tidy, unnecessary. Okay, so we are done, we are on our way home. So it turns out that every house, farm, cottage, everything on this road has the same postcode, which gives me a small problem because on our job sheets for the guys, we put down um, a postcode, and that is literally so if we have an accident or a problem, we can give emergency services somewhere to go to. But on a stretch of road like this where that postcode is potentially a couple of miles long that doesn't really work so i use something else um, it's an app on my phone and anybody can put this app on their phone and it's called 
what three words? Basically, this business company, whatever else, has mapped the entire planet in one meter grids. And every single grid on the planet has a name. And that name is three words. So basically what I can do is I've taken the what three word grid from that property, I'll put it on the guy's job sheets, and if they've got a problem and have to ring the emergency services, they can say, we are using what three words, these are the three words, and the emergency services know within one meter of where they are and how to get to them. So for anybody who does remote work, or like stuff of us on our tree surgery if we're out and about and um, postcodes don't really work then I think what three words is actually a really useful app and potentially life-saving it's free to download free to use but um, I would suggest if you don't have it already put what three words on your phone and share that information with your fellows your friends and if you're going somewhere remote as long as you've got a telephone signal and uh, um, GPS you can basically tell everybody and anybody where you are or where you're going because if you've got favorite places that are remote you can literally what three words those places so you don't have to be standing somewhere to mark a grid you can literally scroll around and find the grid you want tap on it three words will come up and you've literally got an address a one meter square address so there you go what three words it's basically a red box with three diagonal white stripes in it useful